Well, uh, what I want to do today is show you how to simplify, actually not simplify, I want you to solve 2a plus 3 equals 1 half times 6 plus 4a. So what we notice here is we have a variable on both sides, which a lot of students stop when they freeze and they say, ah, oh, crap, now what do I do? Well, the main important thing, when we have variables on both sides, it's a multi-step problem. So the first thing we want to do, though, is simpl simplify the left and the right side. I look at my left side, and there's nothing I can do to simplify it. 2a plus 3 are unlike terms. I can't combine them. On the right side, though, um, I see that I have multiplication of 1 half times 6 plus 4a. So um, what I can do is I can apply that by using the distributive property. So therefore, I obtain 2a plus 3 equals 1 half times 6, which is 3, plus 1 half times 4a, which is 2a. So now what I need to do is I need to uh, take a look at this problem. And I'm going to kind of stop. And usually what I'll do is solve the problem, right? Because the main important goal for when solving equations is to get your variable on the same side, right? Well, I'm going to kind of show you a couple different steps why our answer is going to be what it is. Let's think about, let's just read this out loud as a translating equation. 2 times a number plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2 times a number. Well, since since we have the commutative property is true for addition, this is the exact same thing, right? It doesn't matter if you add 3 or 2 times a number. Either way, you're going to get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter what number I put in for a. It's always going to be true. That's why we write for this problem, it's infinite many solutions. There's infinite many. It doesn't matter what number I put in for a, my equation is always going to be true. And you can just try it. Because remember, But remember, whatever you put in for a, let's say you put a 1 in here, you have to put a 1 in there. Well, you're still going to multiply that 1 times 2, and then you're always going to add them by 3. Now let's take a look at some other ways that maybe if you don't see it, you'll, um, you'll understand it. So let's subtract the variables like we would do for a normal equation. I'd subtract the 2a on both sides. I would get 3 equals 3. Does 3 equal 3? Of course it does, right? So therefore, that's something that you can tell you, oh, when you have that, it's going to equal each other. Well, what if you just wanted to isolate both variables on both sides? What if you did 2a plus 3 equals 3 plus 2a? And let's say you subtract the variables. Then you got 2a equals 2a. Divide by 2, and you get a equals a. Well, of course, no matter what number you put in for a, it's going to equal a on the other side. So there's infinite many answers for you to get the correct solution. So here's the problem. Just make sure you simplify on both sides. Try to isolate the variable. But if you notice, if once you get a, if you get a solution with a number equal to the number or a variable equal to the variable, you're going to have infinite many solutions. Thanks.